Welcome back to the show. And on the first segment, we were talking about um, the war in Ukraine and its impact towards many aspects in the world, geopolitically and economically, and many aspects as well. And for more about the security and geostrategic impacts of the war in Ukraine for Indonesia and Southeast Asia, now we have Ranga Aditya Elias, head of international department at Business University, here in the studio. Ranga, how are you? How are you today? Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you very much for having me today. We're very enthusiastic about this, Rory <laughs> and I. You. Uh, you too. <laughs> We've had a lot of questions towards the end of um, towards the end of the first segment, and we're happy to have an international relations expert. Exactly. Here. We were rambling about why don't um, you know Different NATO. Scenarios. <laughs> broker the peace agreement between the two parties would that be possible but we're gonna ask you later but first of all so one year has already passed after the prolonged war in ukraine could we see an end game of the war this year or is further escalation the more apparent so far ranga okay thank you very much for your question i think this question uh uh being asked by many people about the situation in uh, russia and ukraine war or we can call it Russian invasion. But uh, I think there are uh, several uh, development happens that, for instance, uh, on his speech, Putin already said that he would resume the war or the invasion there, the military operation there, while in the same time also he refused uh, with the new uh, arrangement of start with the US and to some extent this will uh, bring that Putin uh, only want that he want to show what he said uh, the West already started the war and uh, Russia will use their force in order to keep but their safe. Objectively speaking, is it the West that has started the war or is it Russia who wants to annex several areas of Ukraine and use that narrative as a shield? Well, we can say that uh, well, the narrative is used because Ukraine, in the sense of uh, geographic, become the buffer zone for uh, Russia mm -hmm. versus NATO. Yes, from uh, because NATO has a NATO expansion eastward that they would like to expand their mm -hmm. membership into the eastern part of Europe, and to some extent, they will uh, these, these circumstances will give a threat to Russia. Yeah. And uh, if it's happened, Russia feels that they are being threatened by the influence from the Western or from the democratic mm -hmm. country mm -hmm. from the West. And because at that time, uh, uh, Ukraine asked for their membership in NATO and then the war it started mm -hmm. uh, one year ago. And because this NATO membership kind of things, then the, uh, Russia start this narrative that the West start the war. And mm -hmm. I have to use my extraordinary means, or in this sense, it's the military yeah. force, mm -hmm. in order to keep me uh, safe and not threatened by the Western. Okay. So when I listen to you, it's two very different perspectives that don't even meet, that don't even have the same beginning or same end in their, you know, in their dictionary vocabulary. Historically, we've heard that this is actually already a very hot region, and um, it feels like. Um, when, when Rory asked that, I was like, did the West start the war? Who started the war? But there's a lot of funding that coming, that's yeah, coming. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and regarding the stalemate or even ceasefire odds, who should be taking the initiative? We were talking about, you know, how President Joko Widodo was one of the leaders. I mean, how many leaders can say in the world right now, I have a good relationship with Vladimir Putin and I have a good relationship with Volodymyr Zelensky, if you, if you understand what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, who needs to initiate this? Is it uh, going to be Ukraine? Is it going to be Russia? Or is it going to be a neutral party? Who okay. Do you see that? Okay. This is very interesting because the situation is like this. The, the, the war, I mean, the situation in the battlefield is now. Mm. Uh, Ukraine, to some extent, is successful to recapture uh, some of the territory. And currently, I think more than 50% of uh, uh, what Russia already took is being recaptured by uh, the Ukraine. Yeah. And Russia also at this moment, they have to like go deep into their arsenal mm -hmm. to use this, uh, I think, Soviet Union uh, arms at that time. Mm -hmm. So uh, I can say that uh, Ukraine, in a sense, they uh, successful, when, when they successful in recapture many of this territory, it shows that 
uh, their strategy is succeed, succeed mm -hmm. to, to, to take all the territory, while uh, Russia, to some extent, put them in, into the corner of the situation because mm -hmm. at first, when the war began, they said that it's going to be a really fast war, right? Mm -hmm. But now it's already one year. Yeah. You're here now. Year. Okay, yeah. so uh, with Jalanski's hate, the end game will be uh, capture the Crimea. I don't think uh, at that will stop the war. Yeah, it will stop the war. Runner. Because the, uh, I think ceasefire might be happen. However, mm -hmm. it's supposed to be happen if uh, those two countries, uh, Russia and Ukraine, think that they are already in the very high uh, circumstance of war and uh, it's not possible for them to uh, keep the war. And the one that can talk, I don't think. Uh, many people expect U.S. also play a uh, mm -hmm. crucial role there. Mm -hmm. However, we can see uh, U.S. just visit Ukraine, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. And it obviously gives a sign to uh, Russia that the U.S. Uh, it, it will make the narrative by Russia become bold mm -hmm. that the West start the war, right? Yeah. Uh, so I think there's supposed to be another uh, actor that could push this Mm. Uh, ceasefire situation. So before jumping to the Minsk agreement, mm -hmm. um, like what you said earlier, Kai, um, I'd like to ask you about what then could stop the war? Because, you know, um, many sanctions have been slapped towards Russia by the West, right? Mm. From economic sanctions, political sanctions, technology, you, may, uh, you mentioned it. Everything has been slapped towards Russia. What can stop the war and who if there's, you know, another uh, neutral party that could stop the war? Who is that? Would that be, you know, Jokowi visiting another, <laughs> yeah. another, um, another time for for uh, in both countries that could stop the war or UN? UN maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't think UN can play a crucial role here, uh, especially after the president of uh, general UN General Assembly said that it's really difficult for UN to play a crucial role in this uh, Russia invasion because, to some extent, the power politics things happen in UN. We can see through the resolution and many things and I don't think at this time UN is the right mm -hmm. actors to right. do it. So, mm -hmm. so uh, many people uh, say about Jokowi. Oh, I want to put uh, important notes about what happened to Jokowi visits. Uh, when Jokowi visit uh, to Ukraine and Russia, I think Jokowi is the only leader that came to both sides. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it sent a really strong message that we are uh, in a natural position. We are not trying to support uh, only one party in this sense. So I think uh, Indonesia might play a crucial role, especially uh, this year is our chairmanship in the ASEAN. Mm -hmm. And it's obviously when we talk about ASEAN, we talk about the stability in Southeast yeah. Asia. And uh, with uh, this uh, situation, I think Indonesia just have to find a right partner in order to push a negotiation or at this time is ceasefire because I think the first step in order to create peace there is supposed to be ceasefire so everybody can cool down and everybody yeah. can sit together and talk. Yeah. You cannot do negotiation, you cannot talk while you have a war out there, right? Yes, there. that's true. But also the same question, um, this is the irony, right? So Russia announces withdrawal from the Minsk agreement <laughs> at the UN Security Council meeting recently. And this is, the irony is that they're still holding on to the fact that the Minsk agreement was not honored. Mm -hmm. So, um, and here's what I just found out when I was doing a little bit of reading last week. The Minsk agreement expired 23rd of February, 2022. Correct. A day before Russia moved its military operations. Now. What is the prerequisite and how important has this Minsk agreement been? Uh, Emmanuel Macron has mentioned it uh, because, uh, in the beginning because he says Europe can solve this issue because the Minsk agreement was already in place. Uh, Russia seems to hold, hold on to it. What is this Minsk agreement and how important is it to have an agreement to be able to have the ceasefire again to speak again? Okay, so uh, based on the history, means mm -hmm. agreement. It's uh, uh, an agreement that trying to uh, stop the situation, war situation in the eastern Ukraine at that time. Especially with uh, we, we talk about Luhan also Donetsk at, at this uh, in the Minsk agreement and how that uh, the Ukraine government have to 
deal with the uh, militia, but we can say it's a pro-Russian uh, militia. And mm. uh, Minsk agreement is trying to do a ceasefire, create a buffer zone, also a political dialogue in order to uh, maintain the peace in the eastern of Ukraine. However, uh, when Russia start to uh, say that, well, we are withdrawn to form Minsk agreement because Russia also there, at, uh, although the, the war is not at that time directly involved Russia, however, uh, Russia uh, is behind this war, or maybe there's a proxy, mm -hmm. we can say there's a proxy war inside mm -hmm. the, this, uh, what happened in 2014 and 2015. And uh, how, how we can, how we can uh, make the Russia can sit again in the Minsk agreement because Minsk agreement currently is the only agreement that can make the people that have a conflict in the eastern Ukraine mm -hmm. sit together. Mm -hmm. Although it's not, it's not perfect, somebody yeah. still just uh, give a shot to another party, but that's the only agreement that makes everybody sit in a political dialogue. So, historically, it was Ukraine, Russia, and the Organization for Security and Cooperation in yeah, Europe, the OSCE, which is a uh, mediation by the leaders of France, Germany, mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. the so-called Normandy format. So, these are the top two terrors of European Union leadership being involved in mediation and witnessing this agreement. Um, what are the chances of a new agreement of ceasefire coming out? Uh, well, I think... It is important to create what we said in IR, the confidence building measures. Mm. Because currently, uh, the trust becomes an issue there. They, they don't, don't trust each other, they don't trust other parties, they don't trust US, they don't trust even Indonesia already there. But uh, mm. at, at least we can say that it's going nowhere, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Jokowi visit, right? Yeah. Yeah. So there's a, obviously a trust issue there. So it's supposed to be a building measurements happen there. However, in order to have this kind of building measurements, it's supposed to be a ceasefire. Ceasefire is a must. Mm -hmm. And the two parties have to be, uh, have considered that uh, the war is just uh, ruin their resource mm -hmm. and to some extent jeopardize many people, especially yeah. 44 million people yeah. in Ukraine. Would you agree, guys, or especially you, Ranga, if there's a, you know, another block of superpower consisting of, you know, um, neutral parties, including Indonesia, the former G20 chairman, India, the upcoming G20 chairman, the current G20 chairman, and maybe Singapore, and maybe other these non-bloc um, countries that can be trusted by both NATO plus Ukraine and Russia. Would that, you know, new uh, new bloc needed and could solve the problem? Yeah, uh, I think the, in order to invite any. Uh, uh, country or party to become uh, to join in the mediation or dialogue uh, the first uh, important thing is, is the trust yeah if you if they don't have the trust if they don't trust the country that will be happen uh, Indonesia has Indonesia is trusted by both parties right well I can say uh, Indonesia by 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 receiving by both country I, mm -hmm. I can say that Indonesia to some extent is uh, trust by this country but uh, do they trust Indonesia as a mediator for this mm. dialogue? That's another story. Yeah. Okay. So Indonesia have to show uh, their uh, ability in order to create or to push the dialogue between those two countries. And in order to do that, I don't think that Indonesia can do it alone. Mm. Indonesia is supposed to have a cooperation or have to uh, have a partnership with other country. India might be one of the country to become an Indonesian partner at this time uh, because uh, we talk about Russia. Russia is a country that to some extent they have almost like 80% of Soviet Union power, yeah. right? Although, although they separate into 15 uh, different countries, but the 80% of Soviet Union power it goes to Russia. Yeah. And we talk about the big country like Russia. And I don't think uh, a kind of, uh, I can say a small power country can deal with this. So we have to uh, invite people who came from uh, at least the emerging powers. And mm. India and Indonesia to some extent have this modality. Yeah, this is very interesting, right? Because when we talk about egos, the high egos, the old egos, right? It's irrelevant right now. So new powers need to come up. and. 
You've mentioned this, it's very interesting. Last year was our G20 presidency, and this year we are fortunate enough to hold the ASEAN chairmanship. And you mentioned that this is a big role for Indonesia. If the war continues, um, are, the are there direct and indirect impacts for Indonesia and, of course, ASEAN, this, uh, this Southeast Asia, Asia Pacific, from defense and geopolitical perspectives? Because Indonesia is so against this push and pull of right, left, right, left, forward, you know, backwards. And we want to stay neutral. Yeah. And how do you think is ASEAN going to stand together, this region, with Indonesia leading? And how is this going to continuously affect us? Okay. Uh, maybe, uh, in my opinion first, about uh, we are become uh, neutral, uh, I will say it like this. Well, indeed, we have to be neutral with uh, both parties, but however, our position is supposed to be in order to reduce the casualties of the war. Yeah. Because we, we talk about 44, 44, uh, 44 million people in Ukraine, and their life is uh, at stake at the time. Yeah. At this time, I mean. So, uh, I will go through Asia Pacific in order to respond to your question. Uh, in Asia Pacific, I think recently we he we hear that China uh, have uh, what we call they want to uh, send their military uh, aid to Russia because I think in in this sense uh, China see that uh, by uh, many regional territory recapture uh, by uh, Ukraine uh, troops, it shows that Russia, to some extent, uh, they, they they have difficulties in yeah. order to uh, maintain the war. Uh, and if that happens, it obviously will trigger the situation that already happened between U.S. and China in the region. I mean, in the region in the Asia Pacific, uh, many flashpoints will be triggered as well. We can see previously, people, people keep connect that uh, Ukraine uh, conflict with what happened in the Taiwan Straits, mm. right? And uh, it w if this uh, China join or China send the military aid, like what uh, the, they do uh, with, I think, Europe and US when they send also the military aid to Ukraine, it will create another uh, problem in Asia Pacific, mm -hmm. especially in the uh, South China Sea, yeah. in the Taiwan Strait. This flashpoint will, the escalation in this flashpoint will be increased rapidly. Yeah. Wow. Not to mention other aspects as well, economy, um, food, well, energy. Well, yeah. obviously. But for Indonesia, I think, well, because uh, Russia is not our main partner, uh, uh, I think the direct uh, impact to Indonesia is not that uh, yeah. big. However, uh, I think this is an opportunity for Indonesia to show our leadership yeah. in order to maintain the world peace, like what we already said in our constitution. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if uh, our, we have a vision to become one of the big country, like always said by many politicians, yeah. then this is the opportunity. We not right. see this as a problem. This is an opportunity. We have to play a big role in this uh, situation and we have to use uh, any uh, resource that we have, especially our embassy and yeah. many mm -hmm. things that we have. Dr. Rangaditya, thank you so much for your time. Thank You're you. welcome, welcome. My pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for It certainly you. was a very fruitful discussion and hopefully we've learned so much. And we've we learned so will, much indeed. Yes, and we will continue to learn some more because in the next hour we'll continue have another discussion with experts in regards to economics. That's right. That's yes. will be that will be me and we'll be um, delivering some economics and business updates right after this.